Anthropogenic hazards are not like natural hazards. Because they are created by people, they can more easily be mitigated by people. When we mapped the area of landsliding in the Palu Valley, we discovered that the areas that were affected by liquefaction-induced landsliding were restricted to areas that were heavily irrigated. We could see that there was a big aqueduct that had been built in the early 1900s, that that aqueduct was separating areas of zero damage from areas that were absolutely destroyed, and this gave us the clue that it was not just a uh, natural hazard that had been activated. In irrigated areas, there are buried sandy layers that are saturated with groundwater. When the earthquake happens, the strong ground shaking compresses the sediment and causes a big spike in water pressure below the ground, which effectively reduces the frictional stresses that normally hold the grains together. The sediment transforms into a fluid-like layer that can flow. This allows the ground above that liquefied layer to break up and slide downhill under the force of gravity. That's how liquefaction can lead to landsliding. The earthquake hazard in the Palu Valley is not going to go away, and so it's important for the reconstruction process there to look forward over the next hundred years and try to understand how to design uh, an agricultural system that's sustainable in the face of seismic hazard and liquefaction hazard.